Welcome to the Newton tutorial series. I'm Michael Cruz with AC Tech, and this tutorial is going to provide a quick overview of the inputs on the material properties page. So the first thing to notice is that there are three sets of material properties, A, B, and C. So this means that if we had two different types of materials in the same simulation, for instance, a, a set of fine, highly cohesive particles alongside some larger, lumpier, non-cohesive lumps, we could define two or even, if we wanted, three different sets of material properties and then apply those to the specific clusters in the sets. So what you would do is you'd go to your material set and specify to use material type A or B or C. So there are three different types of contact. There's the general linear friction model, there is AC Tech's ratchet model, and there is the general liquid bridge model. You'll notice that the liquid bridge applies globally to all three um, material sets. It cannot be set independently for A, B, and C. The particle-particle friction coefficient is your coefficient of internal friction for material. So if we had contact between material set A and material set B, we would take the average of these friction coefficients. So we would model that with a 0.2 coefficient. The particle to boundary friction coefficient is the surface friction, the friction between particle and a surface in the simulation. Of course, this friction coefficient can be overridden in the geometry um, page. Right here you can override the surface friction for particle set material set A, B, and C for each layer that you import. However, for any layers that you haven't specified a custom friction coefficient, this will be your default surface friction coefficient. The coefficient of restitution is the por proportion of energy that is retained after a collision. So if you were to drop a particle on a flat surface, it would rebound up with 15% of its initial energy. So it would, be, it would rebound up to 15% of its initial height. Due to numerical constraints, the minimum value for this is about 7.5%, 0 0.075. A value of 1 here would imply that there is no energy lost in a collision. It would imply that it's a completely elastic collision. So your particles would never lose their energy. They would continue to bounce around with 100% of their energy. Rotational damping is used to diminish the rotation of your particles in your simulation. So if you had a simulation that used only spheres, spheres obviously tend to roll around quite a bit. And by setting this rotational damping coefficient pretty low, we can force those spheres to be a little bit less rolly. With clusters that are irregularly shaped, the rotational damping is not nearly as important because the, the physical shape of the cluster prevents it from rolling. But when you're using only spheres, it's ob obviously very important that you have this rotational damping. The ratchet effect helps to simulate particle consolidation. So basically, if we had two particles that came together that impacted each other, and the normal force that acted uh, between those particles was 10 newtons, then the ratchet effect would essentially create a negative force between those particles that acts to hold them together. And that force is a proportion of the maximum force that pushed the particles together. So if I set this to 0.25 and we know that the maximum normal force between them was 10 newtons, then Newton would create a, a spring between those particles that acts to hold them together. And the maximum force that that spring can sustain is, is according to this, it would be 0.25, it would be 25% of 10 newtons, so it would be 2.5 newtons. After that force has been exceeded, the spring snaps and the particles are allowed to separate. And similarly to our particle-particle friction coefficient, when we have two particles with different uh, material sets that have different particle-particle ratchet factors, we would take the average of the two factors, and that's how we would model that contact. The particle to boundary factor is the same thing. If you have a particle that impacts a surface with 10 newtons and you set this at 0.25, there would be a 2.5 newton force that helps to pull the particle toward the surface and keep it together. The liquid bridge model basically simulates 
a, a liquid bridge that forms between particles. And, and obviously, liquid bridge is inherently much, much more a, a substantial component with very small material. If you have very, very fine particles, then obviously the water content matters a heck of a lot more than if you have huge boulders. The, the water almost does not matter at all. So the, the way we get around this is by using a, a equivalent sphere size ratio, which basically scales the, the magnitude of these forces by essentially the square of this value. So anyway, the surface tension is is your your surface tension of the liquid that you're using, and generally that's 0 0.0725 because that's your coefficient of uh, the the surface tension of water. But you could change that to make it artificially higher if you wanted to, or lower. The water content is simply the moisture content of your material. The boundary surface tension multiplier is a multiplier for modeling contact between the particle and a surface. So if you wanted the, the particle to be much, much more stickier when it's stuck to a surface rather than a particle, you could set that at 10 or, or 15 or whatever you want. And again, just like your, your surface friction, this boundary tension multiplier can be overridden for each layer right there. Your surface liquid bridge multiplier is just an overwrite for this value right here. And then as I said before, the equivalent sphere size ratio tries to compensate for the fact <clears throat> that the, that DEM cannot model sub-millimeter size particles. You know, the, the typical, the smallest you're ever going to get is, you know, maybe 10 millimeters, depending on the number of particles and the size of the simulation. But obviously, even at 10 or 15 millimeters, you know, in, in reality, the liquid bridge force would not be very significant. So you punch in values like 7, 10, 5, 10, or 15, and you're scaling up these force by basically the square of this value. So you can see that if we set our little slider to very cohesive, this is set all the way up to 15, and you would play around with that to figure, to, to determine exactly how much you think that that sphere size would need to be set for your specific particle set. So that basically covers the inputs on this page, and uh, that'll conclude this tutorial. So if you have any questions that haven't been covered in the manual or these other tutorials, uh, feel free to send us an email at info at Thanks.